Z. Z. Y. Y. W. W. O. O. M. M. B. B. Podcast. Podcast. I'm Shan. I'm Anya. Say Ari. Ari. <laughs> Welcome to Cozy Room Podcast. Let's go. Say what? All right, Mom and Dad. I know you heard the headlines. I've known you see it on social media. Euphoria, euphoria, euphoria. What is it? Um, I don't have HBO, but I'm kind of intrigued by everybody talking about this show. So basically, I've been binge watching this show for the past um, month. And if you have a teenager or a preteen or you really just need to know what's going on in your child's life, in their world right now, you need to watch this show. So basically, the main character, Rue... Um, is a teen girl that's having some drug issues where she's addicted to taking pills. And um, her mom is a single mom <clears throat> for her and her younger sister because their dad got sick and was taking pills for his sickness until he passed away. And Rue, in the middle of helping her mom take care of her dad, uh, started taking the pills Um, because she was in her own depression about her dad being sick and she started getting her own high off of the pills. So from Rue, it extends into what happens from the perspective of a mom that recently lost her husband and maybe dappled into dating versus her mom dealing with, uh, Rue having issues with drugs and going to rehab and hoping, you know, it's a fresh start this time and it not really being a fresh start. She's basically just doing what her mom needs in front of her and she's still taking pills. Rue having a friendship with her dealer to the point where, yes, he supplies her the pills, but he really doesn't want to supply her the pills. It's just a way that he's coping with making sure he can keep an eye on Rue is to supply her the pills whereas him as a drug dealer he's getting these drugs from a head dealer also but at the same time his mother I think it's his mother that's sick he's taking care of his mom at his house who is basically bedridden on a bed and he gives her her food and her medicine and she has pills in the house so it's just a lot of Kids not being in the mind frame of being kids. Kids being in an adult world. Also, Rue has friends that are dappling into into sex, into selling their bodies, into um, doing like soft porn on the computer and talking to complete strangers to show their body and take pictures and dress up people going to parties taking pills um having like threesomes in their teenage years being videotaped uh girls having a destructive uh home life with their parents in it um having sex with uh let's say college someone in college and getting pregnant and a young girl having her first abortion so it goes through all of that the violence that comes with everything you know the threats of being like touched inappropriately all of that is in this show and I feel like parents need to see it because We have this bubble sometimes or a blocked vision that our kids could never be, you know, dealing with that. Or our kids are just in their rooms and they're doing their homework. Or the only person on my child's phone that they're texting is their friends or their family that's around their age. And truth be told, a lot of your kids don't even want to talk to family members that's around their age because they feel like you're forcing them to, okay? And if you don't have a open discussion with your child about sex, if you don't have an open discussion with your child about 
drugs and what it does and what not to do and what not to drink and when to drink and if a drink is offered to you don't and if there's a popular drink sitting on the table that everybody is drinking from get your own separate drink don't drink it because a lot of these teens and preteens are drinking at 11 years old 13 15 like it is rare that your child turns 21 and that's their first drink. Like in America, that is rare. In other countries, alcohol is not a big deal. They'll go ahead and give your kid alcohol. You could bring kids into a bar. Like it's not that serious. But as parents, we really do need to push a uh, self controlled thought process onto our kids. We really need to push a hey, I have boundaries, these are my limits, and teach your kids to stand up in that limit. Also, kids in this um, show were also battling with depression, and you got to see how depression plays out with these teens. There was a scene in the um, one of the episodes where Rue was so depressed that she would bring all the food into her room to the point where she was so depressed she she, she couldn't get up and walk to the bathroom because her bladder was hurting her to the point where she got a kidney infection and it talks about all of that in the processes that you know a young teen's mind goes through and the way that they pacify certain things also what her friends were going through and ego and jealousy and uh, psychopathic parents um, really into like child porn and having sex with children and how that displayed on their kids that were going to the same high school as the kids they were having sex with. Also, um, the heightness and issue with people videotaping all these sexual things and it's just like, why videotape it? Why videotape it? Somebody's going to find it. Somebody's going to see it. Why videotape it? And a lot of teens, it's kind of like their mind is more so stuck in a I don't care thing. Like there was a teen in the show where she was constantly being videotaped, knowingly, you know, given oral to other guys that she was talking to, to the point where she didn't care. And it's a lot between the point of you really caring about somebody seeing you naked and somebody seeing you doing a sexual act privately and you don't care. Like something is happening between that transition that all parents need to figure out. Why don't you care? Like where did your not caring start? What is making you not care? What can I do to help you start caring about yourself and start caring about what, uh, you know, idea you're putting out there about yourself or what you're trying to say about your self-worth where you just don't care what people do to your body and you just don't care what you do to your body. Also in the show is uh, I hyped grad like all always in front of everyone's face um great player you know most popular kid that really has anger issues that really has issues of not being the one not being uh the one everybody wants the one everybody wants to talk about and his anger issues are really stemming from the fact that the relationship he has with his father is really voided like his father is not impressed by his achievements. His father is very dismissive and all that anger that he has toward his father, he's putting it on other people. How he fought people and beat them to a pulp and lied to police. Like all of this is going on in your child's every day. So the fact that a lot of people want to wait to talk to their kids about sex want to wait to um, talk to their kids about drugs, want to wait to talk to their kids about alcohol, you're doing more harm than good. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you, hey, you have to, you need to talk to your kid at this age. Every child is different, but I can sit here and tell you that my mother never sat me down and talked to me about sex. 
My mother never sat me down and talked to me about drugs straightforward. My mother never sat down and talked to me about drinking alcohol. It was one of those passive things. Like, I know you heard what I said to your brother. I know you see what you saw on TV. I know uh, your school may have said something to you guys about not doing drugs. So with all that being said and not coming from me, you know what you're supposed to do and you know what you're not supposed to do. That is not the way that I will be raising my children. My children will be talked to directly from me. My children will be given my personal experiences with my first time I had a drink, with the first time I smoked weed, with the fact that no, I've never popped a pill, never tried ecstasy. Sometimes people who tried it for the first time die from it from it not being made the correct way or being cut with some type of um, poison. And you just never know, okay? And when you're in a mindset where you cannot control your surroundings, that's a problem. So don't even put yourself in that predicament. Um, I will be talking to them directly about um, not doing sexual favors for other people, not being videotaped, not uh, being the person that's always down for whatever, um, having some, you know, dignity, having some boundaries, having some, you know, respect for yourself, having some respect for your bodies. And all through this show is a lot of kids really not having respect for themselves and finding themselves in a situation where they're doing something to the point where they don't even understand why they're doing it. Like one of the characters in there, um, Rue's closest friend, she came off like a happy go lucky girl, but at the same time she was moving around too independently for somebody her age so her dad was very passive and just like oh whatever just eat with me do you need money for this whatever and it wasn't really no relationship there her mom wasn't in the picture so she came and she went how she wanted to she went out of town on like train rides by herself she went to different rave parties that I'm sure she wasn't supposed to get in at her age Uh, she was having sex with older men she was uh texting older men she was uh having sex with um women she was just really out of her element for her age and she had no care in the world and to me There's a fine line between giving your child space and completely ignoring your child, okay? You have to figure out what type of privacy you want to give your child at whatever age they're at that works for you in your household where you can still control the negatives and the positives of what can happen from a situation. Like, there's no way that I will ever be okay with one of my daughters bringing home a boy, okay, and him being in my house. There's no way I will be comfortable with one of my daughters being up in the room with their friend that happens to be a girl too long by herself, staying overnight, none of that. Like, you can't be sure sexually what's going on with a girl these days, and you can't be sure sexually what's going on with a boy these days. These kids are out here trying whatever, down for whatever, doing it wherever. And I think there's too much of a gap on what parents know, how they know, how they can find out, versus what kids are doing. Okay, what they really are doing with their time, what they're really doing in school, who are the girls in your daughter's um, group? Okay, what are they chatting about? What do these abbreviations mean in their text? Uh, What do they mean by this word that they made up? What is the meat spot? You know, what um, is do you want whatever letters tonight? Like, what does that mean? Parents have to be in the know. There's no reason why, oh, I'm just, I don't get your music or I don't get what you're into. There are messages in the music that they listen to. There are messages in the text that they send. 
bigger than what it actually says. And I think if you're a parent and you really want to be actively in your child's life, you need to be in the know of who their friends are. You need to be in the know of where they're going, what they like, what they're into, what's in their backpack, what's in their closet, what's in their drawer, what's under their bed, what they do they keep in their pockets, uh, what's in their locker, how are they doing in school, what are they doing in school, who are their friends in the neighborhood, where are their parents, how are their parents, what are their parents into, like all of that is beyond full time. That's over time that you have to do in order to protect and make sure your child gets to adult age in a healthy way. If you're a parent or soon to be teen parent, I need you to watch Euphoria, okay? It sounds like, oh, that's just something not for me. Oh, that's just a show that I don't want to get into. But if you really want to know what to be aware of raising teenagers and having them in this society we call great america the land of the free all of that nonsense you need to be watching this show watch euphoria okay you can watch it on hbo i'm sure it'll be on netflix a little bit later but i think it's kind of racy to be on netflix so it'll probably just stay on hbo but i suggest you watch it now you can watch hbo through your hulu so if you need to just get hbo and binge watch this just to get an idea of what's going on in these teens lives i think you should do it because these teens are really out here taking pills with all types of substances that they do not know not caring and i think the most harmful drug that there is right now for teenagers is the fact that they have this I don't care attitude like they see everything short term they're not thinking about five years from where they are they're not thinking about 10 years from where they are they're not thinking about what this is going to do to my sister what this is going to do to my dad what this is going to do to my mom you know how will my mom be able to afford me going to rehab how will my mom's job be affected or my dad's job be affected what's going to happen to their group of friends they're thinking very selfishly short term while they should be doing kid-like things and the best way to get your child doing kid-like things is to expose them to more kid-like things and take them out of the elements of needing a phone take them out of the elements of needing to be on the internet take them out of the elephant the elephants the elements of needing to sit in front of a television have them be more active in finding things to do putting their heads in books um taking them places uh traveling with them be more active and what you can do to make sure your child is getting a fulfilled kid life so they can stay in a kid's place because i don't feel like the internet is anywhere for a child i don't feel like your child really needs a cell phone unless two parents are missing there's no school phone that they can use and they have ample time to be by themselves in life or walk home by themselves or travel by train or take bus or subways by themselves yes by then i think they really need a cell phone but you need to have whatever app you can to be in their phone you need to have whatever app you can to be checking who's calling who what's being sent what's the video being sent okay monitor it bye bye